Well, Gloria is not the only single parent in the house. I am, and so is everyone in our audience. I salute all of you. It's not an easy task. And that's why this hour we're gonna celebrate what we pull off every day. Um, I think we can all agree raising kids in a two-parent home is no easy task. Uh, but doing it on your own requires a special kind of strength and patience and lots of prayer. Our first guest is also a single parent. She's the co-host of the Two Funny Mamas podcast, as well as a Weight Watchers ambassador. Give it up for our friend, Kim Whitley! I did when yeah. four days old, yeah. and it changed my life. Uh, just, and people always say, oh, you saved him. I was like, no, he saved me, because I was uh. about to be a stripper. <laughs> <laughs> I got to love it, making <laughs> money where you can. You got to do what um, you got to do. Well, we have a house full of single moms and dads, and a few of them would love to share what they're going through. So we can weigh in. I don't know if you want me to weigh in. But let's get to it. So where's Desiree? Right here. Hi, Desiree. Hi. Hey, Chloe, nice to meet you. Hi. I have two, two kids, and I've been a single mom since day one. They're amazing children. But my brother always tells me that I reward bad behavior. For example, if we're at a store, and they're like fussing around, and they tell me to buy them something, and I just kind of give in and buy it for them because I just don't want to deal with it anymore. And oh. I feel like I'm too soft, and I have a hard time disciplining them. And We're I just love so your advice. different, Desiree. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, they're about to be preteens, so I need help like breaking the cycle and bringing some balance back to my life. Oh my God, that cycle is going. It's going. Yeah, it's going. It's going. It's it's going. Cycle going. Here's the thing. I will. I will relate to, and I think everybody can. Sometimes they just wear you down. Yeah. You're just like, I'm just tired of having this conversation. You're just, you're exhausted. You're like, you, I cannot believe you're surprised that bedtime happens every night. Like, why are we, why are we having this argument? Like, and it wears you down. So I get why you kind of give in, but I will tell you what, literally my kids the other day, they were fighting over something, they, cause they do that thing where, uh, there's a little different, like they know that if we go to a store, I said, I prep them. I say, we're going in this store, and you're not getting anything, we're doing something for somebody else or whatever, or I prep them and say, hey, if y'all wanna grab something like little, you can get one little thing or something, but I am big on prepping them, because if you don't, that's when the nightmare happens. Yeah. And also, they were fighting the other day over something, and they were so entitled, I'm like, y'all have so many toys. And so I took that toy straight to the trash. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. I was, like, I was like, I'm sorry, since neither one of you knows how to share it, we will give it to the garbage. <laughs> like, and it's gone. Until they go in the garbage and get it out. Oh, they won't go in the garbage. They hate that I make them take the trash out. <laughs> oh, no. Joshua has pulled out many toys from the garbage. Oh, really? I threw his iPad away one day. Oh. Oh, I went and got that out. <laughs> But I had to teach him a lesson. He was crying. He was like, oh my God. As soon as he went to bed, I was like, don't let me forget that iPad. <laughs> that was $700. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But you have to. I think, you know, especially, I mean, they're preteen. You, you haven't missed the window, but now you're going to have to probably attack it a little differently because I, I had the same problem. But you have to start as early as possible. For anyone else that is listening, right. you know that. Especially if they go in a store for people that kids to have a tantrum. I, my child has had a tantrum in the store and I had one right with them. <laughs> Every, everybody says, and, that's like going to, like, that's like when we go to Disneyland and you see like Disney, I feel like theme parks are the place you see most families just broken on the yeah, ground. Yes, yeah, like absolutely. it's like this supposed to be the happiest place ever and they're just like, oh, I don't wanna leave. Like they're just like everybody's and you're just like, oh, I feel at home. Everybody's the same, aren't oh, we? It's so um, funny. And yeah. I love when you see the parents just walking and the kids are screaming behind them. Yeah. <laughs> and the parents are just walking. So what do you want to eat? I don't know. <laughs> That's a good one, though. We all yeah. have problems that with that. Awesome that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Where's Tony? Hi, right Tony. Here. Tony. Hi, Hi Kelly. I, uh, I'm a single dad of a 13-year-old daughter, and she is amazing, and I love her to death. 
Uh, when she was younger, our relationship was awesome. We did everything together, vacations, cruises, homework time, yeah. everything. She was a daddy's girl, 100% daddy's girl. But she's a teenager now. Yeah. And things are getting a little tricky. And I have been a single dad for five years now. And I mean single, single, like not even one date in five years. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I'm ready now. I think I'm ready to start dating again. Oh, to have the conversation with yes. her Yes, and oh. so that's what I'm here for. I, I want her to know that she's still the number one girl in my life and will always be. But how do I go about having that conversation where... Daddy's on Bumble now, and, and, <laughs> and, and, and uh, you know. That is a fun. I love that. You know what? That's hard. Like, no, I'm how ready. do you do Tony's that? Tony's tripping. Tony's tripping. So, Tony, look. What's your daughter's name? Ava. Get Ava tonight. Bring her over. <laughs> We're going to go to dinner. Ava's going to be with me. You're going to be like, this is Kim. We're just going out to dinner. I'm going to reach over and rub your hand a little bit. <laughs> She's going to freak out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding you to that. I'm holding you to oh that. Oh, my God. <laughs> I feel like I got to do some charity. Five years. <laughs> I got you. Five I pick years. you up. <laughs> Oh my God! Oh my God! I got—I gotta tell you though, I don't know. I—I I feel like that's—I'm—I'm uh, I'm still where you were years ago. Um, so I—I I don't, I don't have to worry about that yet. But I—I I feel like as long as you still show her that she's, as, you know, with your actions, that she's still number one priority. I think that's. That's the thing, right? But you, she's got to know that you have a life. Like, she's got to know you, that you... You know Ava is in her room at night. Oh, hey, uh, is your mother single? Somebody get my daddy a girlfriend. <laughs> Are you not, kidding me? Not all kids. You, you know, Some kids right. get freaked out. And, but that's why he has to start bringing women around. Well, not a I lot. Mean, or Wait. Boy, I don't know. I, <laughs> I don't know these days. Bring a man, a woman, somebody around. Okay? <laughs> that you're dating. Or, or you want to date a potential. Because if they, they have to see the interaction that it eases in. Because I learned this from Nia Long. Because I had an argument with her when my, my son was first born. I was, she was saying that you should introduce the person you're dating early. And I said, no, absolutely not. I have to wait until and, and he's older. And then I'll bring him around once I know her. She said, no, you bring them around as friends first. So it won't be foreign. I saw her the other night. We're doing a movie together. And I saw her and I said, I apologized. I said, a little Twitter argument. I said, you were absolutely right. So what I do is bring men around with my son introduced as a friend. So there's, you know, he just sees that, you know, mommy has male friends. Now I can tell if we're going to go further, then maybe we'll do some family things together mm -hmm. and it'll, it'll go deeper and it won't be a surprise to him. Also, kids are very good at seeing red flags. Because my child okay. would say, Mommy, you know he smokes weed. <laughs> <laughs> please, please tell me your response is, so does Mommy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Please tell me that's I can't take you. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the greatest response. Oh, could you imagine? Oh, my God. And so does Mommy. <laughs> Would you? It's gonna be all right. Oh, that would be horrible. Oh my god. Oh my god. That's a hard one though. That is a hard one. But I think five years, you've put in enough time, man. It's right. your turn. Okay. It's your turn. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. Good luck. Let's move on to Johanna. Hi, Johanna. How's it going? What a cool name, first of all. Appreciate it, appreciate it. Yeah, Thank you, so what's going on in your single parent world? <laughs> so I am a single dad to a beautiful and creative nearly 10 year old, right? Um, sometimes she'll spend time with me out here, but she lives in Louisiana with her mom and her family. Yeah. Um, but I do my best to keep in contact with her, call her on the phone, FaceTime her, and things like mm -hmm. that. Um, so now she's at the age where, you know, puberty is starting to hit and I'm kind of not ready for that. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I want to have that conversation with her, but you know, it's, it's kind of awkward. How, how do I go about having that conversation with her without making it weird? Oh, wow. Well, hmm. first of all, next time she comes out, I got a 10 year old too. Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, I mean, you single, I'm saying that, you know. <laughs> Yeah. I'm, hey, I'm so just trying to help the call. <laughs> <laughs> For me, I feel like this. My mom and dad gave me a book. 
I'm telling you, they gave me a book and said, good luck. That was oh at my the time. Yeah, that was at the time that parents were pretty nervous about talking about the birds and bees. I don't know about you, they weren't comfortable. But let me tell you something, she's 10 years old, we got Instagram, we got Facebook, we got all these, your child knows a lot more than the kids are talking in school, the school yeah. television, you know, just TV alone. They know, she knows a lot more. So it can't be uncomfortable. You have to be honest and real, but you can't start talking. You have to let her mm. ask questions. Yeah. That's the first thing. Yeah, and I don't, I think because maybe I, yeah, my, my mom, she wasn't very, she's, I, she's so conservative, we're so opposite, I'm very talkative and she's not, and um, she wasn't ever really talkative about See? stuff like that, and I think that was just her generation or whatever, but, um, but for me, like, and my sister, like, we're very open, like, even if my nephew has asked her stuff, who's like a 19-year-old grown man now, like, <laughs> it, we, we're very open, we're, I feel like once you make it awkward, if you make it awkward, it becomes awkward, but a lot of that's just natural, it's just nature, it's just like science. And it's it's one of those things I feel like if you if you make it the red button it's awkward but it's hard because they are way advanced oh, because yeah. of like like they they'll start talking advanced. about stuff and I was like oh my god I'm acting like it's normal I'm sweating <laughs> I'm like I'm like because I don't want it to be awkward but it's just like, it's amazing it, how much they know at ten no it, they yeah. really do it's embarrassing and it's scary so I think you just have to wait for her to start asking questions yeah I think so too yeah you can, and and honestly too like. And will her mom talk to her a little bit about stuff like that too? Oh, yeah. Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Both both of us do have an open communication with her, so yeah. she's very open and willing to ask questions. But right now, she's just focused on Roblox, and I wish she could do that for the rest of her life. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> no, you don't want that no. because you want her to ask because she will found, find out in the streets. Yeah. Uh, or on the school bus. Right. That's where I found out. And it was a weird way to find out, I'll tell you that. <laughs> a lot of stuff that happens on a school, school bus. School bus, absolutely. <laughs> You're like, wait, what? <laughs>